what's up? It's uh, Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials. And in this uh, episode, I'm going to take a look at uh, equalizing in a project. And I've already got this uh, project loaded up with some uh, drum recording, a bass and a guitar. And we're going to try to, you know, create some separation and define some instruments a little bit better. This is a little bit of a country type of lick. So let me just uh, play back this, uh, this first part right here. can hear that the bass line is quite undefined it's quite hard to reach it because the low end of the guitar is quite muddy and well the kick drum is not really present as well so let's try to create some you know enhancing EQ to this uh, to this project I've routed both of these tracks of the guitar to this group track so whenever I'm equalizing on this group it's gonna affect both of the guitar channels I'm going to use the Gliss EQ on the guitars. So let's just uh, take a listen at the bass and the guitars together. The guitar's got a lot of stuff below 100 Hz. As you can see, there's, uh, there's some frequencies. That's the cool thing about this EQ. It shows the frequency content. Let's use a high pass on that one. Let's change the curve a little bit so it's a little bit more like so. Can you hear how much just removing the low end of the guitar gives space to that bass line and it's a lot more noticeable. And that's just by removing frequency, so I didn't add anything yet. So that's a really good way to start off, removing frequencies. I can show you the same, let me turn this EQ off. I can show you the same when I'm using the SSL channel strip, for example. I'm gonna turn that on. Again, just removing the low frequencies from the guitar, again uh, with a different uh, different equalizer, but how much difference that makes on the, on the bass sound, because it has a lot more energy in that region. Well, all together you want to obviously play with the rest of the instruments, and another trick for this guitar would be if we're having vocals uh, we need to you know get a right balance between the frequency content sometimes of the guitars and the vocals what we could do is make a little bit of a dip around this one to two kilohertz region and we just you know get like a two to three db cut on this region and maybe we can do that on another instrument like a, a synthesizer or a piano or a violin depending on what we have playing and when we just make these little bit of dips on all the instruments it gives a lot more uh, freedom for the vocal in that region so that's another trick um, but that's really depending on what you have in the track you know how many different frequency layers that we have uh, interfering with each other Let's take a look at the bass line and uh, I've already inserted this uh, SSL E channel and what I'm doing is I'm removing the very low so everything below like say 50 Hertz I want to cut just to clean up that really muddy stuff so I'm gonna look for the 2 kilohertz region in a bass line I just boosted it with both of these uh, bands right here so you can really hear what I meant. You can hear that really the string and the pluck sound of the bass line is in this region, in the 2 kilohertz region. This can be really helpful on uh, a lot of rock mixes, metal mixes, but also on some funk mixes where you really want that pluck sound to come through. Then you need to look in the higher region and uh, 
that's something that I don't want to do. I just removed some of that very lows and that's all I need to do for this specific mix. But your bass and your kick sound will be really different depending on the music style that you're working on. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm gonna start with looking at the kick drum. And again, I'm gonna do some uh, mixing tutorials in the next season where I'm gonna do some hip hop tracks and where I'm gonna do some funk tracks, where I'm gonna do some uh, rock tracks. So I'm gonna do a lot of different genres because what you wanna do is you wanna equalize it uh, that it fits the music style, right? So um, this country type of track doesn't really need that hip hop type of kick drum. can hear that this kick drum is really hip hop, really that bass, that low end, and that is because this kick drum, the outer track, is really dominant. This is recorded outside of the kick drum, and this one is recorded inside. But together, it gives a pretty warm and full kick drum sound. So what I want is I don't want this hip hop type of sound. It would fit for another type of mix, but not for this one. I want this kick drum to stick out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for the higher frequencies and I'm gonna boost this uh, around, let's say four and a half kilohertz and around two and a half kilohertz. And that's the higher frequency region. And I even removed the very lows from this in kick drum. So it sounds really thin right now. Let me show you what this sounds like. It's really that attack sound that I'm emphasizing. Now let's take this out one, which I could now lower. And this completely pokes through the bass line. Let me mute this, uh, this EQ and let's just put it back on zero the way that it was before we started even leveling. This pokes through the mix a lot better. And this low end, well, I can play around with the balance of how loud do I want this in the mix. Couldn't even EQ this one as well. Let me just in this case use the Gliss EQ again. Remove again the very, very low end of this one with a high pass. So we get something like that. I can even remove like the very high stuff, like that spill that I don't need. So let's. Uh, use this one now I'm really band filtering this and I'm really making sure that I don't let any frequencies to that true that I don't want That hi-hat track is way too loud. Again, I haven't mixed anything here because this is not a mixing tutorial. So this is just a little bit of the basics of how you can 
separate instruments. You can go completely wild, uh, which uh, a lot of like, you know, really highly polished productions do. And that is really by scraping off all the frequencies that we don't need and basically kind of like band passing every frequency group for an instrument. So let's say we want the, the guitars just to be in this frequency region. We're gonna remove everything that we don't need. Really make that highly polished, extra glossy type of sound. That's not something that I try to achieve with this type of mix because I think that you should mix toward what the song needs and what the song asks for. So let's try one more thing. Let's uh, try to get my vocal recording, which I just done through this mix. I'm talking over this country track and I'm uh, trying to get my vocals true. I'm talking over this country track and I'm uh, trying to get my vocals true. Well, like I first said, making some dips in the guitar track and some other instruments would already, you know, create some field for this vocal to come true. So let me turn on this Gliss one, Gliss EQ, where I removed the lows, which I already did, and removed some of these frequencies here around 1 to 2 kilohertz. I'm talking over this country track, and I'm talking over this country track, and I'm talking over this country track, and it's really subtle, but it's already, you know, creating some space for it. I'm talking over this country track, and I'm then I've got the SSL E channel uh, inserted. And what I'm doing here is removing some of the top highs, which was a little bit too dominant in this 4.5 region. Then I uh, increased a little bit the shelf around five, so I get that little bit of sharpness. And then I've got quite a boost right here around this 800 hertz. I'm talking over this country track, and and I'm removing the very lows as you can see right here. I'm talking over this country track and I'm boosting it a little bit right here and I can even turn on the compressor. I'm talking over this country track and I'm uh, trying to get my I'm talking over this country track and I'm talking over this country track and there's still some headroom so I could you know put it a little bit louder which I really need or else I can't stick this through so I need to have a little bit of compression. I'm talking over this country track and I'm uh, trying to get my vocals true. Let's I'm talking over this country track and I'm uh, trying to get my vocals true. I'm talking over this country track and I'm uh, trying to get my vocals true. Well this is just uh, using the SSL channel strip little bit of EQ curve, removing some lows, adding a little bit of that uh, body part of my vocal and uh, well adding a few dB because I uh, also compress it a little bit with this uh, compressor right here and you can hear how much of a difference it makes when I just have that little bit of a dip right here in the guitar. I can do that with the piano or maybe even with the drums if I need to but uh, I think I could work with this depending on uh, how many more instruments I would add in this uh, in this song. For vocals you know you can always look in that clarity region of one to two kilohertz where there's already a lot of presence in this uh, in this microphone that I'm using so I don't really need that I'm talking over this country track and you can see it even starts to clip right away when I do that so I need to lower the output a little bit I'm talking over this country track and I'm uh, trying to get my vocals true I don't like the sound of that that's why I uh, rather increase that volume and keep this one down I'm talking over this country track and I'm uh, trying to get my vocals true. Let's see if that works. I'm talking over this country track and I'm uh, trying to get my vocals true. Let's see if that works. So uh, a little bit of a combination of uh, dynamics and EQing obviously to get the vocals true uh, in a mix. So um, I hope this helped you a little bit along the road. In the next season, I'm really going to go all out. I think that's a, that's a lot of stuff that you guys have been waiting for. I'm going to dive deep into mixing. I'm going to start with a lot of mixing theory. Uh, we're going to dive into mixing consoles. How do they work? What is the signal flow? And after that, we're going to start mixing songs. I think it's going to be a really awesome season, the next one. I hope uh, you guys look uh, forward to it just as much as I do. Keep you guys posted on Facebook and uh, Twitter and I uh, really uh, thank you guys for watching this I hope you've learned something once again this was a uh, wick for Wikimedia tutorials and uh, I hope to see y'all soon peace